All right, grade nine. As usual, I'm very happy to host all of you. And today's session, we are starting our revision about uh, the ancient Middle East and the Egyptian civilization. First, we have already spoken about the Mesopotamian civilization and that uh, this uh, civilization that arose in Mesopotamia started to arise between two, uh, two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates one here in this area. Okay, later on from the Tigris and Euphrates, they start to, they start to spread across all of the fertile crescent in this place. And of course, you know this, uh, the fertile crescent, we need to know this. The fertile crescent is uh, the place or the area between uh, the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea. So in this place arose the, the Mesopotamian civilization. And I have already spoken about the Mesopotamian civilization. So today we are talking about its neighboring civilization, the ancient Egyptian civilization. Of course, as any other civilization, the ancient Egyptian civilization arose around the, the fertile land of the River Nile. Of course, the River Nile is the longest river in the world. It starts from uh, here in uh, Middle Africa in Ethiopia and goes uh, past 10 countries until it reaches uh, the Mediterranean Sea in uh, Egypt. So the ancient Egyptian civilization started to arose in this uh, place here uh, in uh, Upper Egypt. Egypt was divided into two places, Upper Egypt and uh, Lower Egypt. Upper Egypt down here in the south and lower Egypt here and the north. Later on, we'll speak about uh, those dynasties which uh, hold control of uh, the ancient Egyptian civilization and also how uh, the ancient Egyptian uh, started to adapt to the circumstances of agriculture and then to development, astronomy, mathematics, uh, until they reached uh, their construction and also their uh, evolution. So let's start uh, first. In the ancient Egyptian civilization, it wasn't just uh, nowadays Egypt's border, yet uh, it took uh, Egypt nowadays, some parts of Sudan nowadays, and also some part of uh, the uh, Arabian countries here, like Palestine today, like uh, uh, Jordanian, okay, and even it reached uh, Syria, okay. All of this was uh, in the Egyptian civilization. The statues at uh, the Tebus stood in front of a temple developed by the Nile of flooding. Yeah? Egyptians learned to control the flooding and use the Nile for agri agriculture. So we know this: uh, the River Nile is the main source of life uh, for the ancient Egyptian people. Even the historian Herodot, uh, he has spoken about uh, the River Nile and he said that uh, the river Egypt is wholly the gift of uh, the River Nile. Meaning that uh, without uh, the River Nile, Egypt would be nothing but uh, plain desert. That's why the ancient Egyptians, they uh, took great importance and care of uh, the River Nile. They even uh, started to worship uh, the Nile itself uh, and uh, some of them started to provide some uh, sacrifices for the, uh, the river. As they made the ceremony each year in order to just uh, celebrate the flooding of the Nile. So, what about the kingdom that arose in Egypt? We have the Old Kingdom. In the Old Kingdom, our scholars actually divide the history of ancient Egypt into three main periods, the Old Kingdom, about 2575 PC until 2130 PC. The Middle Kingdom, so we have first the Old Kingdom, and then we have the Middle Kingdom, and we also have the New Kingdom. So we have three kingdoms in the ancient Egypt, but uh, we have approximately 25 dynasties, 
all right but we just divide the whole of these dynasties the whole history of them into three kingdoms the old one the middle one and the new one so when i ask you in the final quiz or the exam how many kingdoms uh, did we have in ancient egypt so the answer is three kingdoms okay so during these periods uh, power passed from one dynasty or ruling family to another but egypt generally remained united well not always egypt was uh, united because egypt was divided into two kingdoms uh, upper egypt and the south and lower egypt and the north and uh, then we have a uh, uh, pharaoh whose name was uh, minas or mina in arabic he came and united uh, both parts of uh, egypt and it was for the first time uh, the whole of uh, the egypt under only one control so what about the structure and government of the old kingdom and how does the old kingdom differ from that of the new one so you will find on page number 27 speaking about that a structure government and the building paper. Of course, according to the first chart, government. 47. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Uh, 47, not 27. 47. 47. So we will speak about uh, how the old kingdom was structured in the government. So they yeah, first started to have uh, the pharaoh, the pharaoh who was uh, the one who was controlling the whole uh, dynasty and the whole. Uh, country and beneath him we had some visors okay these uh, visors they just held the, the pharaoh in order to just maintain control of all the people and provide a hand for him in order to construct a project to make a celebration etc so we have pharaohs or rulers of ancient egypt and also we have the helpers, uh, the helpers of a king any question Abdul Rahman? Uh, no, I opened it to accept. No, no problem. All right. So any pharaoh, okay, he will just once he come to power, once he come uh, to taking control of the country, he will just directly start doing what he will directly start uh, constructing his own pyramid. He will start to construct his own pyramid. So why would he construct a pyramid? simply because the ancient egyptians they believed in life after death ancient egyptians believed in life after death consequently they started to build these magnificent tombs in order to preserve their bodies in a good shape until time comes again for their soul to come again and inhabit its own or previous body okay so all of uh, the pharaoh of uh, the old kingdom they started to construct uh, or build their uh, pyramids in order to preserve their uh, mummified body bodies in it uh, we have user for example who was a uh, egyptian king during the old kingdom dispatched similar military campaigns and sent expeditions to mine for minerals such as uh, turquoise and also copper and according to the ancient government structure as we have said before it is the same structure for any civilization at the top of the structure or the pyramid we will have the pharaoh as he held absolute power and played key role in religion because in ancient egypt the pharaoh he was the direct connector to the divine powers or even he was even worshipped okay so pharaoh was either a direct contact to the divine powers the god the goddess etc or in uh, some areas or some periods of the egyptian histories pharaohs were worshipped as gods beneath the pharaoh will have a divisor 
divisor like uh, uh, the right hand of uh, the pharaoh he was the chief minister who supervised the, the government and then we will have a specific departments like who reported the visor about tax collection farming irrigation and at uh, the bottom of uh, the government structure we will have the uh, scribes scribes uh, report and carry out the visors in a structure like they will go they will go themselves in order to collect the taxes they will uh, supervise themselves for uh, the uh, irrigation systems and the new project that are to be built what about the old kingdom and the pyramids well the pyramids are considered one of the miracles of the ancient uh, history they are truly a miracle and they are really magnificent it's not just because they contain 2.3 million stone in them uh, they are totally accurate in building their heights is an alliance between uh, the earth and the sun there is an alliance and the height uh, of the pyramid and that of uh, the distance between uh, planet earth and also the sun six million tons total weight come on uh, five acres it's really really magnificent how it was built and it took approximately uh, from 20,000 to 30,000 workers who stayed there to build it for over than 20 years. For over than 20 years, the pyramid was being established. And it was very accurate that still nowadays some secrets within the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza, is still unknown so far. So, analyze that data, Pharaoh spent a great deal of resource and time building pyramids based on the information here. Why do you think it is a pyramid built after Khufu were not as large as his? Of course, because simply pyramids varied in shape and in distance according to the ruler, and they were dynasties. So once a king dies, his son will come to power. So Khufu was the most magnificent pyramid, and those who came after him was not as big as because simply he was uh, considered to be one of the greatest pharaohs who have ever uh, ruled Egypt. But these facts about uh, the uh, pyramid must be memorized. The stones were limestones and some granite. And the granite, uh, by the way, it was taken from mountains at the Red Sea, which is totally still a mystery nowadays. How could they do that? How? The pyramid is in here in Giza. Let's see. Okay. That's at the pyramid, right? So see the distance from here. And they brought the limestone from this place. Just imagine the distance from here to there, and they brought it when thousands of years ago. How did they even move the stones? Okay, so it was totally a mystery for us. How did they even did it? How did they just built it? How did they move the stones? Uh, how there is a great alliance between the sun and uh, the pyramid? The, uh, astronomy was involved if you brought a steel plate and you put it inside the pyramid it will become sharp once again so there are many many magnificent things about the pyramid that are still uh, so far a mystery for us later on we'll speak about uh, the middle and new kingdom of course uh, during two power struggle as we have already studied okay power struggles guys is the most specific reason for any fall of a dynasty okay any fall of a dynasty will come first and forever because of the struggles within these dynasties so we have power struggle crop failure okay sometimes we have famine all right and the cost of building the pyramids of course 
all of this contributed to the collapse of uh, the old kingdom. So we have a struggle among those, among the ruling dynasty itself. Uh, we had some years of drought, there were no crops, and also the country was bleeding because of the cost of building the permits. All of these aspects contributed to the fall of the old kingdom. And after more than a century of this unity, the new pharaohs eventually reunited the land, assuring in a new era, which is the Middle Kingdom. So Egypt between the old kingdom and the new kingdom stayed this unity in a disunity or stayed ununited for approximately a century, 100 years. And the Middle Kingdom, we'll speak about it, and the New Kingdom. And one of the most magnificent queens in the Middle Kingdom was Queen Hatshepsut, and her stepson, Ramses II. Also how Egypt started to decline, and how the Nopean people came to control. So, as uh, the old kingdom, the new kingdom came to power in order to obtain uh, unity of uh, the Egyptian government and the Egyptian people and also the civilization itself. Uh, in ancient Egypt, uh, marketplace farmers and also craftsmen set up uh, sales to sell uh, their products. Uh, ancient Egyptians did not use money, so all uh, purchases were traded, which is uh, the partal economy. Partal economy was used in ancient Egypt, all right? In the Middle Kingdom and the New One, Egypt controlled vast area of the land, nowadays Egypt, Sudan, and also some part from Palestine, Jordanian, Kuwait, and even Syria, okay? So all of this was under the control of the ancient Egyptian civilization. And later on, of course, by analyzing this map, Egypt extended and treated, especially in the era of Ramses II. What about religion? The Egyptian people, they are a religious people by themselves. And those people were really, really, really okay, religious. Most of the thoughts and pleas they had were totally connected to a divine power and they will even sacrifice themselves for even the divine divine powers so egyptian inherited from their eldest ancestor a variety of religious beliefs and practices also inscriptions on monuments and wall paintings in tombs that reveal how egyptian appealed to the divine forces that they believed ruled this world and also the after life what about the importance of gods and goddesses? As I told you, the ancient Egyptian people, they were religious by their nature. So, gods and goddesses played a very specific and important role for their purpose of life. If you do not have a purpose in your life, then you have a stale life, a very dull one. But once you have a purpose, then you will just seek your whole life in order to adapt to this purpose and develop to it and also about their views for the afterlife ancient egyptians they believed in the afterlife ancient egyptians believed in the afterlife that's why they made the mummification the mummification is the process in which a body is preserved by some sort of soul and taken out all the liquids of it and some guts and inner organs so that it will not decay by time and by using mummification they will preserve the bodies for the afterlife so simply because they believed in afterlife they adapted mummification remember when we were speaking about the reasons for development why would any civilization develop or adapt? 
and we said the most important thing in any civilization is the need they need to do something for living in afterlife so they adapted mummification and one of the most important pharaohs of that era was king tutankhamun tutankhamun he was a young pharaoh who died very very young actually and he's very famous nowadays because he is considered to be the only pharaoh that his tomb was discovered complete without anything missing out of it so king tutankhamun his tomb was discovered in 1922 and what about an attempt to reshape the religion of course we have Ikhnaton who started to reshape religion he this believed in all of the oldest tale gods and he started to believe in just one god which is Aton and he needed all the people to leave the old gods and starting believing in the new one which is Aton but of course according to the priests this they did not like this because simply if they left the old king <coughs> sorry if they leave uh, if they left the old kings and the old gods they worshipped then they will have no uh, position in the society right so for example i'm teaching you language arts if i took language arts out and i tell you that uh, the subject will not you will not have a test in it any longer then there is no need for me right so for uh, the priests of uh, the old gods they just rejected the, the new one because they will have no decision in the society by believing in only one god and removing all of the ancient and previous gods and goddesses. so once again the ancient egyptians believed in many gods they were also polytheistics each of whom had a role in maintaining peace and prosperity across egypt so we have a god of the sun, a god of the Nile, a god for beauty, a god of wisdom, a god for the afterlife, a huge god controlling all of them, blah, blah, blah. Okay. What about organizations of the Egyptian society? Well, the Egyptian society was one of the most important arranged societies in the whole ancient civilizations. They worked very hard in order to maintain balance in their organization and like any other civilization egypt had its own class system as both a god and early leader the pharaoh who stood at the top of the society as we have spoken before and along with him of course the royal family directly under the pharaoh were the governmental officials after the government officials, we have the high priests and priestess who serve the gods and goddess. And next to them came the nobles who fought for the pharaoh's war. And we have a tiny class of merchants, scribes, and artisans. Developed slowly, they provided the needs for the rich powerful. And of course, the majority of the Egyptians, they are the peasant farmers so like any civilization like any society will have the ruler and his family on the top beneath beneath them we will have the governmental officials high priests and priestesses and also the noble merchants scribes artisans and the peasant how about the peasant farmer so the farmers in Egypt, they varied and their life changed from one season to another. For example, in the season of harvest, they will work in land and they will start harvesting the crops and planting the new ones. On the other hand, when there is no farming, they will just go and work for the projects of the state or the country like the pyramid or even some irrigation system projects so the life changes according to the circumstances and the seasons and we also have changes to the social societies and higher status of the women 
for the hierarchy, we have the pharaoh, the government officials, the merchant scraps and artisans, and the majority were peasant farmers. These are some of the arts of the ancient Egyptians. Most of the art that has been preserved in ancient Egypt nowadays, like the artwork shown here, comes from the tombs and monuments and emphasizes life after death and the preservation of past knowledge in order to be passed down from one generation to the other one. And also, as any civilization, they needed to adapt and developed in new circumstances. Ancient Egyptians, they left a vast record of their achievements, stone temples and monuments along all with the paintings and writing records on papyrus. All of them reveal much about the ancient Egyptian life and religion's beliefs. They also show Egyptian knowledge and advances in many fields, such as medicine, astronomy, mathematics etc all of these fields uh, were a main concern for uh, the ancient egyptian people also the egyptians uh, were a particular people meaning that uh, they always worked anytime anywhere according to the circumstances and the place that they would work and when uh, they had a problem they used uh, trial and error to find a solution so it's okay to have a problem, but uh, the most important is to try to find a solution for that uh, problem. What about the learning advances? So, ancient Egyptian, they adapted the language, a written one, which is uh, the hieroglyphics, and also they started to make uh, scribes, and uh, we have uh, the Rosetta Stone, in which we could uh, figure out the meaning of uh, the ancient Egyptian language as it was written in three different languages. The ancient Egyptians also, they had many advances in medicine and they treated some of the most difficult illnesses and even made some surgery back then. According to mathematics, they excelled in using mathematics and also they built most of their temples, pyramids, and also most of the structures that they built was based on both mathematics and astronomy sciences. According to the art, Egyptian art is now still shown in some of the temples and on the walls of the tombs. And the literature, they also had very amusing literature stories, especially that story of Set. And also we have Isis and Osiris. Okay, all of these stories tell us about the literature of ancient Egyptian, about the uh, forever going fight between uh, evil and uh, good. And the legacy of the ancient Egyptian is well known. This is a photo of uh, their language that they adapted, which is uh, the hieroglyph. Since hieroglyphs seen here as in this photo, took a lot of time and uh, core to write. Egyptian scribes also developed the, the cursive, heretic, and uh, demotic scripts for uh, quicker use. Meaning that, uh, like the like uniform you studied in Mesopotamia, first it was hard to be written, then they adapted it and started to change it in order to co and serve their needs. A quick revision about the ancient Egyptian civilization. Right, Egyptian mathematic, uh, mathematical and scientific advances in medicine and planet phase. According to Pharaoh's records, ancient Egyptians used herbal treatments to cure themselves. Many of uh, the herbs were carried from Canaan, Persia, and also Eastern Africa by traders and conquerors. And they used all of these herbs in order to treat, treat some illnesses. What about? Human anatomy and the mummification. Greek and Roman conquerors adapted Egyptian knowledge. Their studies of human anatomy were definite for over a thousand years. And also in astronomy and mapping, 
constellations, planetary motion, Egyptian astronomical knowledge merged with the Greek and Pipolian astronomy after Greek conquest, adding Greek astronomies to calculate the size of the Earth and also make other astronomical advances. What about the calendar? Ancient Egyptian civil calendar had 30, uh, 100, 365 days in a year. After Romans conquered Egypt, Julius Caesar added the leap year to the Egyptian calendar. Geometry, land, surveying, pyramids, construction, measurements, name it. Greek mathematicians also. Pythagoras traveled to Egypt in 535 BC to learn mathematics, geometry, and astronomy from the Egyptian civilization. What about analyzing information? Okay, the Greek ruler Alexander the Great also conquered Egypt according to the information on the chart. How was the Egyptian knowledge based along other culture? Meaning that the ancient Egyptian people, they uh, adapted some of the most important knowledge and the other civilization were touched by uh, that knowledge and they also had and that's all about the ancient egyptian which we have studied That's what should be doing. Be honest. Do you really want to watch a video that looks like this? There's a good reason why presenters. The ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for over 3,000 years and became one of the most powerful and iconic civilizations in history. At its height, ancient Egypt's empire stretched as far north as modern day Syria and as far south as today's Sudan. But long before it was an empire, ancient Egypt was a series of small, independent city-states that bloomed along North Africa's Nile River. The city-states were divided into two regions and named according to the flow of the Nile, Upper Egypt in the south, which was upstream, and Lower Egypt in the north, which was downstream. By about 3100 BC, the two halves united, thereby creating one Egyptian state that lasted for millennia. The reign of this civilization can be divided into three major periods of prosperity called the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms, and two periods of instability in between, called the First and Second Intermediate Periods. Guiding the Egyptian people was a succession of about 300 rulers, often referred to as pharaohs. Pharaoh, which means great house in Egyptian, was never the ruler's formal title. It only became synonymous with the ruling individual in modern times, thanks to its use in the Hebrew Bible. These rulers, who were not always men, nor Egyptian, were considered protectors of the people and served as divine liaisons between humanity and the hundreds of gods they worshipped. After the rulers passed away, ancient Egyptians believed they then became gods. To prepare their journey into the afterlife, the rulers constructed elaborate tombs, including the Great Pyramids of Giza and underground mausoleums in the Valley of the Kings. Rulers filled their tombs with all the items they could need in the afterlife, including gold, jewelry, food, drink, and even pets. Preparing for this journey to the gods also involved mummifying one's body. The deceased's corpse was embalmed, wrapped in hundreds of yards of linen, and placed inside the tomb so the body could be reanimated in the afterlife. To this day, structures like the Great Pyramids are a testament to the role of religion in ancient Egyptians' lives. But they also represent the innovative and cultural might of the Egyptian people. Innovations in mathematics and written language in particular 
propel their civilization to success. Math, specifically measurement mathematics, helped Egyptians understand and harness their world with numbers like no other civilization had before. They developed a new form of measurement called the cubit. It was used to design massive structures, such as the Great Pyramid, with remarkable geometrical precision. The Egyptians also measured time. By combining mathematics with astronomy, they established a 24-hour division to the day and created a solar calendar, which was the first dating system in history to feature 365 days in one year. Lastly, Egyptians developed methods to measure and survey land around the Nile River. These civil engineering feats made way for the construction of dams, canals, and irrigation systems that helped farming and agriculture to flourish in the Nile Valley. In addition to mathematical concepts, the ancient Egyptians also created written languages to describe the world around them. The oldest and probably most well-known of these is hieroglyphic writing. This system was developed around 3150 BC during the Old Kingdom and has over 700 pictorial characters. It was used to inscribe monuments and pottery and predominantly served a decorative or ceremonial purpose. Soon after, another ancient form of writing, called hieratic, developed out of the hieroglyphic system. It was a form of cursive that was written in ink and served a more functional purpose. Unlike its more formal predecessor, hieratic was written on another ancient Egyptian innovation, papyrus. Papyrus was a type of paper derived from the papyrus plant, which grew plentifully along the Nile River. This medium gave the ancient Egyptians a new avenue of communication and record keeping that allowed their civilization's administrative skill to grow and their culture to spread for thousands of years. As with all great empires, ancient Egypt came to an end. It was eventually conquered after a series of invasions, including those by the Persian Empire in the 4th century BC and the Roman Empire around 30 BC. Not many civilizations can claim a lifespan of over 3,000 years, let alone one that made vast cultural contributions that still resonate in modern times. Ancient Egypt, with its linguistic and mathematical innovations, spirituality and religion, and extensive political and military might, set a high standard for all civilizations that followed. All right, great man. Any questions so far? No, thank you. All right, if you have any question, have no hesitation to ask me. Okay. All right. See you tomorrow. Have a nice weekend. Thank you.